Course 1. Fundamentals and Basics. Let's start with wearing the Hakama. Follow along step by step. The proper attire should be worn with each session. Tie the Hemo around the front and back. Tie the cords above and below your belt. This will keep your Hakama on securely and your sword in place during practice. A bow in the front of your Hakama is optional. Either a bow or a knot will suffice. The main thing is that the Hakama is snug around the abdomen area, as that is the area where your sword will be maneuvered. The cords of the Hakama are called Ahimo. They will wrap around the top of your obi, then intersect and cross around the back and then tie again in the front. Once they tie in the front, bring them around the back and tie it once again. Your obi or belt will first wrap around your keikogi. The obi should be snug around the abdomen. Keep the cords as flat as possible around the waist area. Pull all the cords snug but not too tight. Not to lose, not too tight. After you secure a knot in the center of the back, lift the hakama's tail and allow the upper back support to cover the back of the obi. There's two hemo cords attached to the back of the hakama. Bring those two cords to a final tie in the front. And it is there that you should wrap everything together. All the cords will meet together and a final knot can be made. You can make a knot or you can make a bow at the center. If there is any excess, be sure to tuck away. Drawing of the sword is a push-pull dynamic. While you push with your right hand, you pull with your left. Depending on the angle of your first cut, you will twist the sheath to the angle in which you intend to cut. The important thing here is body connection and learning how to draw from your center, much like a free throw in basketball. There is a centered internal focus. This allows the player to release the ball into the hoop. So the supporting hand which unsheathes the sword is like a bow, which draws the arrow upon release the blade cuts. It's an important thing here to activate the pinky. As you push and pull, the final snapping of the sword is driven by your pinky. Allow your pinky finger to pull tightly against the base of the handle to cause the final sharp cutting action of the sword. In Nukitskaya, both mind and body must be a one. Once the body flows properly, the sword will follow. In drawing the sword, there should be the element of speed, a quick draw. However, in the beginning, emphasize good technique and proper form. 
Each style in swordsmanship has their particular way to draw the sword of which they espouse. The key is to act with intensity of purpose in whichever way you draw the sword. Syncopate the timing so that when the sword is drawn, your stance will solidify. Don't draw the sword, then step. Draw and step as one. One body, one mind, one sword. So, Chiburi is the shaking off of clinging particles and or blood to the sword. Don't make a big deal of it. However, keep the tip of the sword active and ready. Keep the motion smooth and flowing while the sword drops down. Then come to a sharp stop. Let the kisaki or tip of the sword be around the height of the knee. Then proceed to resheathe your sword. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well.